How did ancient Egyptians move 2.3 million stone blocks without wheels, steel, or electricity? Some say it was aliens, others say lost technology. But what do top experts really believe? From secret internal ramps to casting stone like concrete, and even cosmic alignments with Orion's belt, these are the five most fascinating theories about how the pyramids of Giza were built. You'll hear from architects, scientists, archaeologists, and even the ancient historian Herodotus himself. Ready to uncover the real secrets of the stone giants? What if the Great Pyramid wasn't built on a giant ramp, but through a hidden staircase within its own walls? That's exactly what architect Jean-Pierre Houdin proposed. A radical theory that challenges everything we thought we knew about ancient Egyptian engineering. For centuries, scholars assumed the Great Pyramid was constructed using enormous external ramps. But those ramps would have had to be longer than the pyramid itself, possibly consuming more material than the monument they were meant to build. And yet, there's no physical evidence they ever existed. Houdin offered a simpler, more elegant solution. What if the ramps weren't outside, but inside? According to his theory, the ancient builders began with a straight external ramp, used only for the lower third of the pyramid. Once the structure rose too high for that to be practical, workers transitioned to a spiral ramp carved inside the pyramid's outer layers. This internal corridor wound its way upward, turning at right angles around the pyramid's core, allowing stones to be hauled to the top, hidden from view the entire time. It was compact, efficient, and left minimal archaeological trace. So, is there any proof? Back in the 1980s, a French scientific team scanned the pyramid using microgravimetry, a technique that detects tiny differences in density. Surprisingly, they found a low-density spiral pattern that wrapped around the core. They didn't know what to make of it, but Houdin believed it was a blueprint left behind by the builders themselves. Later, thermal imaging revealed cooling lines on the pyramid's surface that aligned perfectly with the path of his proposed internal ramp. Houdin teamed up with Dassault Systems, an aerospace firm, to digitally model the pyramid in 3D. Their simulations confirmed that the dual ramp system, external and then internal, was mechanically sound and logistically feasible. But how did they lift the 60-ton granite beams above the king's chamber? Houdin had an answer for that, too. He believed the Grand Gallery acted as a counterweight system. Workers loaded granite beams onto sleds, attached them to massive weights sliding down the gallery, and used gravity to lift them into place. Wear marks on the gallery walls support this idea, yet skeptics argue that without visible remains, Houdin's internal ramp is still just a theory. So, engineering revolution or educated guess, you decide. Could the pyramids of Giza be a map of the stars? That's the heart of the Orion correlation theory, a provocative idea made famous by author Graham Hancock and writer Robert Boval. They argue that the three great pyramids at Giza were not just royal tombs, but an earthly mirror of the stars in Orion's belt. One detail is especially compelling. The smallest pyramid, Menkaua, is slightly offset from the others, just like Mintaka, the faintest star in the Orion trio. Coincidence? Hancock says no way. He believes this alignment was intentional and symbolic. The ancient Egyptians held the concept as above, so below, as sacred. According to Hancock, the Giza complex was designed to mirror the night sky as it looked around 10,500 BC, a date he claims was important to a forgotten advanced civilization that predated the dynastic Egyptians. He also suggests the Sphinx once had the head of a lion, symbolizing the constellation Leo, aligning with Orion in that same epoch. If true, it would mean these monuments are remnants of a civilization lost to time, possibly destroyed by a cataclysm at the end of the last ice age. But mainstream archaeologists are not convinced. 
They argue that the pyramids were built between 2600 and 2500 BC during the reigns of Khufu, Khafre and Menkara. There's no evidence they were conceived as part of a single master plan. The pyramid of Menkara was built later and is significantly smaller, weakening the supposed symmetry. Astronomers have also weighed in. Simulations show the alignment with Orion is imprecise. The angles are off, and to make the layout fit, you'd have to flip the sky upside down. Critics call it pareidolia, the human tendency to see meaningful patterns where none exist. More importantly, no known Egyptian texts connect the pyramids to Orion's belt in the way Hancock suggests. Still, Hancock's theory captivates millions. Why? Because it speaks to our curiosity, the dream that ancient monuments might encode hidden knowledge or cosmic truths. While the Orion correlation theory remains unsupported by evidence, it continues to inspire people to look at the pyramids not just as ancient architecture, but as messages written in the stars. What if the real secret to the pyramids isn't hidden in the stones, but in the lost city that built them? That's the perspective of American archaeologist Mark Lehner, who spent decades digging, not into the pyramids themselves, but into what surrounded them. In 1988, his team uncovered the remains of a sprawling 17-acre settlement just south of the Sphinx, beside a massive wall called the Wall of the Crow. What they found revolutionized our understanding of how the pyramids were actually built. This wasn't a myth. It was a real, functioning city, complete with bakeries, breweries, silos, barracks, and workshops. The discovery showed that pyramid construction wasn't just about placing blocks. It was about logistics, planning, and people. Lena's excavations uncovered massive bread molds, industrial ovens, bones from cattle, sheep, and goats, all proof of large-scale food production. The graffiti found on the pyramid blocks included team names like the Drunkards of Menkaur or the Friends of Khufu, hinting at pride, camaraderie, and even humor among the workers. According to Lerner, around 4,000 to 5,000 full-time specialists lived and worked on site, with an additional 20,000 rotating laborers joining during the Nile's flood season. These weren't slaves dragged in chains. They were skilled workers in a centralized, state-organized project. And yes, Lena even found the pyramid's main quarry, a huge horseshoe-shaped depression just south of the Great Pyramid. The missing stone volume matches the pyramid's size almost exactly. One of the most symbolic finds, a 30-foot stone wall separating the city from the pyramid plateau. Lena interprets it as the boundary between the sacred and the secular, between divine architecture and the human machine that powered it. A monumental gateway likely served as a harbor entrance where boats docked and delivered stone and supplies during the annual Nile floods. Lena's research stands in contrast to cosmic theories and lost civilizations. His view is grounded in archeology, span the tools, the workforce, and the infrastructure no secret ramps, no ancient aliens. To Lena, the true wonder of the pyramids isn't mystery, it's management. The miracle isn't how they moved the blocks, but how they moved the people. What if the pyramid blocks weren't carved from quarries, but poured like ancient concrete? That's the bold and controversial theory proposed by French materials scientist Joseph Davidovitz while traditional archaeology holds that the 2.3 million blocks of the Great Pyramid were carved from limestone and hauled from quarries, Davidovitz believes many of them were actually cast on site using a chemical process known today as geopolymerization. According to his hypothesis, the ancient Egyptians quarried soft limestone that was rich in clay and fossil shells. They crushed this stone and mixed it with natron, a naturally occurring salt along with lime and water. The result was a viscous slurry that could be poured into wooden molds. 
After curing in the desert sun, the mixture hardened into what Davidovitz calls re-agglomerated limestone. Blocks that looked natural, but were actually man-made. And he didn't just theorize it, he demonstrated it. At his Geopolymer Institute, Davidovitz and his team produced blocks in Egypt using only local, historically available materials. Videos show workers mixing ingredients in buckets, pouring the slurry into forms, and removing solid blocks within hours. The surface texture of these blocks varied with water content. Some emerged smooth, others rough, mirroring the appearance of real pyramid stones. Skeptics called it pseudoscience until 2007. That year, Michel Barsoum, a material scientist at Drexel University, performed microscopic analysis on casing stones from the pyramid. His team discovered unusual features, cementing phases, amorphous silica, and tiny trapped air bubbles not found in natural limestone. These anomalies strongly suggested that some blocks had been cast rather than quarried. Why go through all this trouble? Davidovitz argues that casting would have solved multiple engineering problems, especially for the smooth outer casing stones and the smaller upper layers of the pyramid. Pouring stones in place would eliminate the need for cranes, levers, or massive ramps. It could also allow for tighter joints and faster production. However, there are caveats. No ancient Egyptian texts mention the technique and the amount of fuel needed to produce lime at scale would have been immense. Archaeological evidence still shows plenty of traditional quarrying methods. Yet, if Davidovitz is even partly right, it rewrites the story of the pyramids, not as a tale of brute force, but of early chemical engineering brilliance. What did the father of history hear when he asked the Egyptians how the pyramids were built? Around 450 BC, the Greek historian Herodotus traveled to Egypt and recorded what local priests told him about the construction of the Great Pyramid. His writings, though centuries removed from the actual events, offer one of the earliest accounts ever written about these mysterious monuments. But his story is as fascinating as it is questionable. Herodotus claimed that Pharaoh Khufu shut down the temples and forced Egyptians into hard labor. According to him, the pyramid took 20 years to complete, with 100,000 men working in rotating crews of 30,000. Even more surprising, he said it took 10 years just to build the causeway, a massive stone-paved road used to transport materials from the Nile River to the pyramid site. He described the pyramid as being constructed in steps and claimed that wooden machines made of short timbers were used to lift the blocks from one level to the next. One curious detail, he wrote that the pyramid was built from the top down, starting at the summit and finishing at the base. That claim has confused scholars for generations. And then there are the wild tales, that Khufu forced his daughter into prostitution to fund the project, and that the workers consumed 1,600 talents of silver's worth of onions, garlic, and radishes over the course of the construction. Modern Egyptologists take Herodotus with a heavy grain of salt. He was writing more than two millennia after the fact, and his sources were oral traditions steeped in myth. His numbers are almost certainly exaggerated. The real workforce, based on archaeological digs like the Haidt El Garab settlement, was likely 25,000 to 30,000 people at peak. And there's no evidence that the pyramid was built from the top down. Still, not everything he wrote was fantasy. Archaeologists have uncovered remnants of a causeway, evidence of ramp systems, and signs of highly organized labor under a centralized authority, all details that loosely align with Herodotus's narrative. Herodotus's account may be part fact, part folklore, but it reminds us of something important. Even in ancient times, people were trying to figure out how the pyramids were made. And today, over 4,500 years later, we're still trying to do the same. A monument 
built by many hands and minds. So, how were the pyramids really built? Was it Houdin's hidden ramp, spiralling upward inside the stone? Hancock's cosmic blueprint, linking Giza to the stars? Lena's lost city, full of skilled labourers and logistics? Davidovitz's ancient chemistry, casting blocks in wooden moulds? Or Herodotus's echo of forgotten voices, telling tales of wooden machines and royal commands? The truth might not belong to one theory alone, but to fragments of each. What's certain is that these monuments weren't built by aliens, lost super-civilizations or supernatural powers. They were built by real people, engineers, architects, planners and workers, who imagined the impossible and then made it happen. That's what makes the pyramids truly awe-inspiring. Each perspective adds something essential Jean-Pierre Houdin teaches us how creativity and modern tech can reframe ancient puzzles. Graham Hancock, though controversial, reminds us to look for meaning in patterns and to question mainstream narratives, however carefully. Mark Lehner brings us down to earth, showing how brilliant organization, not mystery, can build wonders. Joseph Davidovitz challenges our assumptions of material science suggesting that innovation in chemistry may have played a role. And Herodotus, flawed as he was, shows that the fascination with Egypt's monuments goes back millennia. He was the first to ask the question we're still asking today. We may never uncover the exact blueprint behind the Great Pyramid. There may be no single smoking gun that answers every question, but maybe the real magic lies in the mystery itself. The pyramids endure, not because we understand them, but because we don't. They are the last surviving wonder of the ancient world, and perhaps the most mysterious. They stand as a silent challenge to every generation. Figure me out if you can. In chasing that challenge, we've learned more about engineering, astronomy, labor systems, material science, an ancient culture than any one explanation could ever offer. So whether you believe in ramps, stars, geopolymers, or forgotten kingdoms, remember this. The pyramids weren't just built with stone. They were built with ambition, imagination, and awe. And if that story inspired you even a little, then do us a favor. Like the video, share it with a friend, and subscribe for more deep dives into the mysteries of history.